Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the palmitoylation of proteins. Okay, so we are discussing the enzymes which are involved in the S palmitoylation of proteins. Okay, and the family of enzymes which uh, catalyzes the S palmitoylation of proteins is this DHHC family of enzymes. Okay, so we've now discussed the 23 different members of this family of DHHC uh, enzymes. We've discussed uh, their membrane-spanning topologies. What we now want to dis discuss is where each of them is localized, basically. So, uh, basically, there are three main membranes that they are present. They're present in the ER membrane, the Golgi membrane, and the plasma membrane. Now, some will be present in a single compartment membrane. So some will just be present in the ER membrane, some will just be present in the Golgi apparatus membrane, okay, and some will just be present in the plasma membrane. However, others are present in more than one membrane, okay, so some are present in both the ER and the Golgi, and I'm going to highlight the ones that are present in both the ER membrane and the Golgi membrane. I will highlight those in blue. Okay, so those are going to be in blue. And some are present in both uh, the ER and the plasma membrane. So they're in the endoplasmic reticular membrane and also the plasma membrane. And I'll abbreviate plasma membrane to PN. Okay, and we'll highlight these in turquoise. So, now we have all the 23 different DHHC enzymes written out in front of us. Let's now color code them for where they actually are present. Okay, so we'll start off with the Golgi apparatus. Okay, so which ones are present within the Golgi apparatus? So, number three, DHHC3 is present solely in the Golgi apparatus membrane. Okay, DHHC4 is present solely in the Golgi apparatus membrane. Then DHH3, uh, sorry, DHHC7 is present solely in the Golgi apparatus membrane. Also, DHHC8 is solely present in the uh, Golgi apparatus membrane. Then also, 15, uh, then 17, and also 18. So 17 is one of these ones here with the six uh, membrane spanning alpha helices, and 18 is over here. So all of these uh, members of the DHHC family that I have now highlighted in green, those are solely found within the Golgi apparatus membrane. Okay, now we'll do the ones that are present within both the ER and the Golgi. Okay, so these ones are going to be highlighted in blue. So firstly we have DHHC2. Then we have DHHC9. Okay, then DHHC12. Okay, and then finally DHHC22, which remember is this one with only two membrane spanning alpha helices. Okay, so all of those ones now highlighted in blue are present in both the ER, whoops, can't see this, ER and the Golgi membranes. Okay, next we'll move on to the pure ER ones, which we're highlighting in orange. Okay, so DHHC1 is purely present within the ER. DHHC6 is purely present within the ER membrane. DHHC11 is purely present within the ER membrane. DHHC13 is purely present within the ER membrane. DHHC14 is purely present within the ER membrane. DHHC16 is purely present within the ER membrane. And finally, DHHC19 is purely present within the ER membrane. So all of those now highlighted in orange are purely present in the ER membrane. Now let's turn our attention to the plasma membrane. So which are purely present within the plasma membrane? Okay, so this is DHHC5, okay, and also DHHC20 and DHHC21. So we can now deduce uh, which two are present in the ER and the plasma membrane. So that is DHHC23 and DHHC24 down here. Okay, so that's their presence within the different membranes, basically. Okay, so 
These enzymes are the enzymes which add palmitoyl groups onto the sulfur atom within the thiol group of cysteine residues that are uh, midway along a polypeptide strand, basically. So these are the enzymes which catalyze S-palmitoylation of proteins. They are not the enzymes which catalyze N-palmitoylation of proteins. They purely catalyze S-palmitoylation. Okay, so we're now going to discuss uh, the enzymes which remove palmitoyl groups uh, from proteins. Okay, so we've discussed that uh, some palmitoyl groups, some S-palmitoyl groups, are stable, i.e. once you've put them on, they will remain bound to that cysteine residue until the protein is destroyed, whereas other um, palmitoyl groups are cycling basically, so they're continually being put on and then removed, okay, put on and then removed. So we've discussed how you put them on, now we need to see how you remove them. Okay, so there are two classes of enzymes which can remove uh, palmitoyl groups from proteins. Now, one of these is involved in the cycling and the other isn't, so we'll start off with the uh, class of enzymes uh, which are involved in the cycling, basically, okay? And these uh, enzymes are known as acyl protein uh, thioesterases. Okay, so let me put these here. So they are acyl protein thioesterases. Okay, so acyl protein thioesterases. Okay, and for short, acyl protein thioesterase is often abbreviated to uh, APT, for short. So, within this family of acyl protein thioesterases, there are two members, basically. There is an acyl uh, protein thioesterase 1 enzyme, and there is also an acyl uh, protein thioesterase 2 enzyme. So there is an acyl protein thioesterase 1 enzyme, and there is also an acyl protein thioesterase 2 enzyme. And both of these enzymes are within the cytoplasm and can remove uh, palmitoyl groups from uh, cysteine residues, okay, and thereby undo S palmitoylation. Okay, so these are involved in the cycling of palmitoyl groups that are on cysteine residues. Okay, now there is another uh, class of enzymes which are known as uh, palmitoyl protein uh, thioesterases. Okay, so these are called palmitoyl protein thioesterases. Okay, and for short, palmitoyl protein uh, thioesterases are abbreviated to PPTs. Okay, and these are not present within the cytoplasm. Okay, these are present within lysosomes. Okay, so when you wish to destroy proteins, you can either send them for degradation by the proteasome, or they can be degraded by lysosomes. So within cells, there are these little structures known as lysosomes. They are membrane bound little structures within the cell. Okay, and they are full of uh, enzymes which degrade proteins, basically. So this is a lysosome here. Now, one of the enzymes within these lysosomes are palmitoyl protein thioesterases. And again, there are two members of this category. There are palmitoyl protein thioesterase, sorry, there is palmitoyl protein thioesterase 1, and there is also palmitoyl protein thioesterase 2, PP. T2. Okay, now PPT2 doesn't seem to do anything. Well, we don't know what it does, at least in vivo. Uh, in vitro, i.e. in the test tube, palmitoyl protein thioesterase 2 can cleave palmitoyl coenzyme A molecules. Okay, so let me get my picture of palmitoyl coenzyme A. Okay, so in the test tube, it is capable of breaking down palmitoyl coenzyme A molecules. So it's capable of bringing in a water molecule, 
okay and adding on an alcohol group to this carbon and adding on a hydrogen from the water molecule to the sulfur to reproduce you a palmitic acid molecule and a coenzyme A molecule so it's capable of hydrolyzing palmitoyl coenzyme A at least in the test tube but it is not capable of removing palmitoyl groups from uh, cysteine residues on proteins on the other hand palmitoyl protein phyoesterase 1 is capable of removing palmitoyl groups from proteins. So, imagine the circumstances. A protein comes into the lysosome and the job of the lysosome is to destroy that protein. Now, in order to destroy that protein, it has to remove the palmitoyl groups from the protein. So, that is the job of this palmitoyl protein phyoesterase enzyme 1 here, this PPT1 uh, enzyme. It removes the palmitoyl groups uh, from proteins, okay, and then they can be degraded. Now, there is a very, very rare but very, very horrible disease uh, in which you have two mutations which cause a loss of function of both genes of the palmitoyl protein phyoesterase 1 enzyme. Okay, so if you have two loss of function mutations, one on both copies of the gene that you have, um, what happens is that you produce no functional palmitoyl protein uh, phyoesterase uh, 1 enzyme, and that means that you can't degrade proteins properly within the lysosome, so you get buildup of proteins uh, within cells and this is specifically harmful well particularly harmful uh, in the brain where it causes death of the neurons and uh, then that leads to gradual neurodegeneration basically okay now the disease what the well, the name for the disease where you have two mutations, two loss of function mutations in your genes for palmitoyl protein phyoesterase is infantile neuronal seroid uh, lipofusinosis. Okay, so where am I going to write this down? I'll try and do it here. So, for short, it's um, written as INCL, okay? And this stands for infantile, so I is for infantile, N is for neuronal, um, the C is then for steroid, okay, and then the L is for lipofusinosis, so L is for lipofusinosis. Now this is an extremely rare disease, and what happens in infantile neuronal uh, steroid lipofusinosis is that the child develops you normally usually for the first year of life, but then after the first year of life what gradually happens is you get more and more neural degeneration and they uh, gradually lose the ability to move, they lose sight, um, and eventually it kills them basically. So it's a horrible, horrible disease, but thankfully it's very rare and it results from a, a double mutation of this palmitoyl protein phyoesterase 1 enzyme. Okay, so it's a uh, recessive disorder. Okay, so we've now seen uh, the enzymes which put uh, S palmitoyl groups onto proteins and we've seen the two classes of enzymes which take them off. Okay, these ones, the acyl protein phyoesterases, are within the cytoplasm and they are probably involved in the regulation of signaling pathways by this cycling of whether there are palmitoyl groups attached to proteins involved in the signaling cascade or not. Okay, uh, whereas these palmitoyl protein phyoesterases, they are within the lysosomes and specifically prote sorry, palmitoyl protein phyoesterase 1 is very important in taking the palmitoyl groups of proteins that you want to degrade within the lysosome. Okay, and then allowing uh, lysosomal degradation of that protein. Okay, so that concludes our discussion of palmitoylation.